Hello everyone, this is Minister Monique Sharp and I am just so excited to share with Boss Church just what the Lord God has placed in my spirit. So if you have your Bibles, if you could turn with me to Psalms 121 verses 1 and 2 for our reading. It's a very, very familiar passage and I just believe that God has placed this in my heart just to encourage you. The Bible says in Psalms 121, verses 1 and 2, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. For this time, I want to talk from the subject, he has me. He has me. In this Psalms, it's actually called a song of accent or a song of degrees. The people of God would sing this as they journeyed to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was a special place. It was a place in the Old Testament times that people could meet with God. People could meet with God. And while on their way, meeting with God. They have potential danger or some distractions. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been distracted when you really try to focus on God and then there were some interruptions along the way? Well, if you have, then you can understand that the people as they journeyed to Jerusalem, there was some potential danger. They're, they're walking on foot. There was some potential distractions along the way. So they would sing this song of ascent as a way to encourage and to remind them that the Lord God was a keeper. No matter what the dangers may be, God would sustain them, that God would take care of them. And so I just want to remind you today that the Lord God, he has you. I don't know what you may be faced with. I don't know what may be going on in your life, but you have to know he has me. I have three things just to remind you today. The first thing that we see in verses one and two, God is is sovereign. God is sovereign. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The psalmist here is pretty transparent in that the psalmist poses a question, right? From which comes my help or where does my help come from? Have you ever experienced in your Christian faith, in your journey, God, where are you? Am I the only one? God, God, where are you? I am going through some things that I can't put language to. I am going through some things that are hard, that are pressing, and I need to be reminded where you are. God, are you asleep? I need you to wake up because I'm going through. Have you ever been in that type of situation? Here, the psalmist reminds us by posing a question, where, where are you? Where are you? And he has to remind himself that, that he is the one who made the heavens and the earth. Funny true story with me. I have a fourth grader and my fourth grader is doing fourth grade math. Now, please don't judge me. It's been some time since I actually been in elementary school. And so my, my daughter, she brings home some math homework. And for me, it was very difficult. Um, I was telling her, I said, hey, I said, um, um, let mommy try to figure this out. And she's looking at me as the one who leads her and guides her along the journey to have the answers. And I am kind of freaking out on the inside. My anxiety has increased. And I'm like, I don't know how to multiply fractions, how to do any of these things. I have forgotten it. So I was asking the same question that the Psalmist asked, where does my help come from? And guess what, guys? My help came from the anointed TikTok, glory to God. <laughs> I was able to follow some amazing math teachers who provided simple plans of how to get the job done. And so I want to encourage you. Sometimes we may have posed that question, where does my help from? 
come from. And we have to be reminded of who God is. Sometimes you can't focus so much on the problem, but you got to, you got to focus on the person. You got to focus on just the one who created the heavens and the earth. The psalmist here, he, he answers his own question. My help comes from the Lord. He is the maker of the heavens and the earth. I don't have to fear. I don't have to have anxiety over concern or worry about things that are outside of my control because God is sovereign. And somebody needs to be reminded today of how sovereign your God is. Your God made the heavens and the earth. The same God that's able to take care of the birds and the lilies. He is the same God that can be sovereign in your life. He's going to take care of you because he has you. I need you to remind yourself that the Lord God has me. He's not going to leave me. I don't care what the journey may be. I don't care what the distractions or the potential dangers that you may face. You have to remember that God is sovereign and God has you. The second thing we see from, from this passage of scripture is God is a sustainer. God is a sustainer. The Bible says in verses three and six, he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. So we have to know that God is sovereign and God is a sustainer. Now, remember, guys, I told you that the people are on a journey to get to Jerusalem to worship God. And there's some real potential danger. So they're in a desert region. Can you imagine all of the potential danger that the people could be concerned or worried about? One danger could be to fall, to slip. One could sprain their ankle or break a hip. Uh, one could also be um, the condition, the situation. Traveling in a desert region, there are very hot temperatures in the day and there are very cool temperatures at night. So this is a real, real deal as it relates to potential danger. What I love about scripture is, is that scripture reminds us again, not only who God is, but what God is able to do. Mm, it is here, the psalmist reminds us that he is a sustainer. And I don't know about you, but I've experienced God's sustaining power in and through my life. Oh, God is a sustainer. The Lord God is your keeper. And you need to be reminded on this day that God is my keeper. I don't care what I'm faced with. I don't care how big the problem may be. The God I serve is a keeper. If he can keep the Israelites as they journey to Jerusalem to worship him, he can keep you. Now, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your mountains and your valleys may look like, but I'm declaring over your life for you to remember and embed this scripture in your heart that God is a keeper. God will keep you. God won't let you slip. God is going to keep you no matter what conditions may come your way. You're not by yourself. The Lord is with you. The Bible declares that he's your keeper and the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Bible declares that the sun shall not strike you, glory be to God, nor the moon by night, that God is there with you, that he is sustaining you. It doesn't mean you're not going to feel the sting of the heat. It doesn't mean you may not feel the temperatures of the coolness of the night, but the psalmist wants to remind you and I that God is a sustainer. It doesn't mean that, that problems will not be a part of your life, but what it does mean that when you're faced through problems, the Lord is sustaining you. And I don't know about you, I get a little excited about reading and studying the word of God because it gives us good news that God is a sustainer that he's with me, that I'm not by myself as I'm 
journeying through this life. I'm not by myself as I'm striving to live and look like God. I'm not by, it seems sometimes in seasons that you're lonely, but you're not alone. And some seasons you may have a negative report from the doctor, but you got to believe and declare it and allow your faith to lead you that God is a sustainer. You may be going through some transitions, some changes in your life that you didn't expect it, but you got to know that God is a sustainer. Ah, I'm trying to encourage you today for you to remember that God is sovereign and God is a sustainer and the Lord God has me. That he's keeping me. Sometimes I can't see my way. Sometimes they're blinders as I'm going through the journey. But I have to remember that what, what the word of God says, that the Lord God is a sustainer. Ooh, the Lord, he has me. God is a sustainer. God is sovereign. Ooh, God is a sustainer. And the last thing is, God is savior. The Bible says the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Verses seven and eight. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Hmm. So we learned that God is sovereign. We learned that God is a sustainer and God is savior. Remember the context of this text is that the people are on a journey trying to go to worship God and they're by foot and they have their families and they're a good target for crime to happen uh, for someone to try to take their tithes and their offerings that they would bring to the Lord. The text suggests that God will watch over your life. Glory be to God. God will cover you against any evil that tries to come up against you. Ah, God is savior. And that simply means that God is a deliverer. <laughs> Has God ever brought you out of something? Has God ever delivered you out of some stuff? Somebody ought to open up your mouth and give God some praise for being your savior. Ooh. That the Lord God didn't allow the enemy to consume you. He didn't allow the enemy to devour you. He didn't allow the enemy to destroy you. But the Lord God is your savior. He is your deliverer. Oh, glory be to God. Uh, how do we know that, that the Lord God is our deliverer, that he is our rescuer? The Bible says here in verses seven and eight, that he shall preserve your soul. Woo! And he'll preserve your coming out and your going in. The Lord has made through his word a definite thing that he is going to be with you. Woo! <laughs> that he is going to rescue you, that you are not in this by yourself, that I know sometimes while on this journey, it appears as if you're by yourself. It appears as if you're lonely. It appears as if you're going through, but you are not alone, that the Lord has promised to be with you, that the Lord is with you. When you wake up in the morning, God is with you. When you get started a on your day, the Lord is with you. When you go to work, God is with you. When you're, you, when you're carrying out your business, the Lord God is with you. You have to remind yourself that no matter what I'm going through, hmm, no matter how hard or how pressing this season that I may be in, the Lord is with me. God has me. What I love about scripture, it, it reminds us of the beauty of God being savior. God is savior. He's a deliverer so much that he sent his son Jesus as the ultimate deliverer. He sent Jesus to die for the sins of the world that we were not even worthy. And he was innocent, but he died for you and for I. He's the ultimate 
ultimate deliverer. He's the ultimate one that can bring you out. He's the ultimate one that can help you through. He's the ultimate one that can lift you up. He's the ultimate one that can fill every void in your life. He's the ultimate one that's able to guide you and nurture you. He's the ultimate one that never leaves you. He's the ultimate one that's very present in your time of need, in the storms you may face while on the journey. Jesus is the ultimate deliverer. I dare you be able to point back to yourself that the Lord God has me. I'm going to lift up my head. I'm going to keep pressing even in a season filled with pressure. And I'm going to be reminded that God is sovereign, that God is a sustainer, and that God is Savior, that the Lord God, hmm, he has me. I'm standing because he has me. I'm pressing because he has me. I'm still able to have breath in my lungs and still able to maneuver even in a rough journey because the Lord has me. Father, we honor you. We bless your name upon this day. And I pray for whoever hears this message will feel encouraged. I pray that they will see that they're not alone while they're going through. I pray that they'll see that there is nothing too hard for you. I pray, Father, that their faith would increase, oh God. I pray, Father, that their hope will increase, oh God. I pray that they'll have assurance that God will see a good work to its completion. The one, the thing that you started within us, that you won't allow it to, to, to maneuver and go to the left or to the right, but you'll see it to completion. So God, I pray for those who have an ear to hear. And I pray, Lord, that they're able to trust you even in the difficult space. I pray that they're reminded that you have them and that you love them and you sent them the ultimate deliverer to be the example to us all. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you so much for your time. God bless you.